been 30 years since this newsroom was in action and they've been having a relaunch in their new venue. The original cast of the BAFTA winning award, uh, Drop the Dead Donkey, are set to tour the country, bringing you loads of analysis, reports and bulls. Etons, yes. Uh, let's take a look back at the iconic Globelink newsroom. Here, the Iraqis built a complex network of trenches, which is... <laughs> Sally, I think George wants you. <laughs> George. Oh, hello, Dave. Yes, fire away. Give it to me. Whatever it is, I can take it. Well, you have been going rather over the top, this. Well, it's very hard work being ruthless, you know. <laughs> These braces really dig into your shoulders. <laughs> Complain, but I'm not one to complain. No, I'm not one to complain. Now, I'm not one to complain. That is the news on a day when temperatures soared to record levels. Good night. <laughs> and we are thrilled to be joined by Jeff Rowe, who plays editor George, Victoria Wicks, who plays newsreader Sally, and Neil Pearson, who plays deputy sub. Dave, welcome to this morning's show. So Thank good you. to see you all. Yes. Good to be here. How does How? it feel watching those back? <laughs> Who were those children? <laughs> <laughs> Who were they? Who were they? Short oh. trousers. I mean, you were having a chuckle there watching it back. <laughs> it but same. I haven't seen that for mm, 30 years or something. Yeah. I mean, yeah, such an me iconic laugh. show. Yes. Does it feel exciting to all be back together again after quite a long time? It yeah. is. Yeah. I mean, we've we've been together for 30 years now. We go to see each other's shows. Oh. We were on Zoom together during COVID. I mean, it's a it's a tight knit group, and has been ever since we made the uh, the first show. But um, to work together again on uh, something that was such a happy ship yeah. mm. is um, it's a joy. How did yeah. the reunion? come about how did the, 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 the writer start you know what was it could, could I think use, they like, were other? possibly approached to do an, something else that they'd written I and mean, they weren't quite sure about it. they thought but actually to have a go at drop the donkey would be interesting in the current climate with news stations springing up all over yeah yeah um, that it could be done there was a way of doing it and Interestingly, people who have not seen the show before didn't. Um, my daughter is 18, she'd never seen it, but she got it completely. And, she'd, and a lot of people said that it's brilliant the way the writers have made it happen for, yeah. for, these, for this same group of people and to make it believable that they, were, they are now in, in this well, new enterprise. It's quite hard to sort of explain. And I, like, firstly, it was sort of an era of kind of four channels, and Channel 4 mm. at the time was kind of, you know, so kind of revolutionary. And you guys, like, it's. It was almost like you and Spitting Image was kind of the only shows that really did that kind of satire. Yes. But you were also invested in the characters as well. That's right. And it, it was a situation where the characters were allowed... They would have made those kind of jokes, whereas no, no topical news shows its comedians telling yeah. stuff, whereas this were, were, these were real people and you got the impression that you were watching something that was, was happening here and now. Is yeah. that what happened with the show? So Because we, yeah. you were reacting to what was going on as well, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, so we, we, we started each week with a 22-minute script for a 28-minute show. Okay. And through the rehearsals, we would add what we call TTs, tentative topicals, through the week, stuff we thought would run until our transmission date. Uh, and we refined that through the week. We recorded that uh, the day before we went out. Mm -hmm. And on the day, we cut the show together and two of us always went in to do a voiceover uh, to mop up any story that had broken since we recorded the night before. Praying so, nothing uh, happened. <laughs> yeah. Sli yeah. Slightly scary. Well, if, it was a, if it was a very heavy topical week, yeah. then an awful lot of us would have been using clipboards uh, <laughs> just to make sure we got the lines yeah. sorted yeah. or post-it notes on someone's forehead yeah. just so that we could uh, get the lines out. And have you been able to bring that to the stage show as well? Yes. Yeah. The, the writers, uh, even now as we speak, are writing the topicals for tomorrow night. So uh, when we go to Sheffield, as we are next on this long tour, um, the writers will be updating throughout the week so that if something huge happens, they can, they'll call us and say, look in your inbox. Yeah, no rest of the say bucket. It. Yeah. Victoria, yeah. Your, your character was so wonderful. She was, she was so sort of primitive, she was a diva, but at the same time, <laughs> you know, you were playing alongside David Swift, who was just, you know, you had, you know, 
you have every reason to be a diva next day. <laughs> so, I mean, is it would be wonderful playing her again? Oh, it's it's absolute joy. I mean, I have to warn people, Sally's views haven't softened. <laughs> <laughs> so you meet Got harder and harder. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, uh, yeah, she's a, just such a treat. Yeah. I can't believe how lucky I feel. You know. And, <laughs> and a word about David Swift and Hayden Glenn as well. I mean, we had we had Hayden on the on the sofa just before yeah. the she passed. I mean. Um, two wonderful comic actors. And yeah, in amazing. a strange way, it must be yeah. nice paying tribute to them being out on the road. Yes, it, it is, and we do. Um, yeah, it's really sad that Hayden couldn't make it. Um, <coughs> and, and, I mean, you do feel the loss of somebody like David. He had such a <coughs> task. Yeah. He was like the, you know, in an orchestra. He, he was the bass note of the... Yeah. Of the uh, he, yeah, he had that, that particular voice that... They're in the curtain call with us. Yeah, yes. they're in the curtain call. It's a sitcom, it's really... I was just looking at the dates it ran. 1990 to 98, to be doing satire at that time is... It must have been really exciting, cos you went through kind of, like, the end of Thatcher and then Blair got elected in 97, yeah. so you had this great run, really, of yeah. world events that was happening, <clears throat> end of the Cold War and stuff. Must yeah, have been quite an exciting time to be doing. It was an exciting time. Yeah. And uh, I remember in Gus's office, we changed Margaret Thatcher out for Tony Blair. I remember the picture. Gus changed the picture <laughs> behind him in the office. Um, yeah, so it's... Uh... But there's, there's, uh, there's never a dull time to be... Well, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Media, 22 Prime Ministers that we've had yeah. recently. Yeah. 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 I mean... Wouldn't that have been fun if we'd been on that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but but it's, it's, it's unnerving for us because there will always be big stories to cover. And if you're coming to the show on a Thursday and on Thursday morning, I don't know, Trump goes to prison, yeah. then you're yeah. going to want to know what we say Absolutely. about that story yeah. Yeah. that night. Yes. And um, as Jeff said, you know, I don't... My first lines tomorrow haven't been written yet. I have no idea... How exciting. What I, well, for you, maybe. Is, is that... <laughs> <laughs> for you, maybe. Is that no for me, or are you just <laughs> chilled about that? Yeah, it is, but, I mean, it's, it's a very good corrective against any form of complacency yes. in this show. Yes. You know, we, we uh, have to be completely concentrated all the time. Um, because even if you're not directly involved in them, you'll have people around you saying different stuff. Which is kind of the antithesis places. of everything you're trained for in theatre, no, right? No, so it, that's stand-up <laughs> comic. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not right. it, 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 It's quite throwing, because there, I think there are 16 scenes or something in the, in the show, and uh, you <clears> think you know where you are, what comes yeah. next. Yeah. Often, you're, they're similar in the sense that you're sitting in the same place and it can throw you, because someone else says something different, you go, oh, no, that's my... <laughs> this is where I get this piece of paper out and I know I do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you lose all those clues. Right. So, you know, you've got no marker points God, along the way. It keeps on your toes, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> it really does. Well, didn't you stab Daniel Craig very... very or, or... <laughs> yes, well, not in, re in real life. Someone else. That was his first... <laughs> yeah. Look at him, it's his first role. Look, yeah. Look at him there! Look at that. Hello, darling. How are you, sweetheart? Dad, you've got Brilliant. a toasting fork stuck in his neck. Yes, and it feels terrific. Wonderful. <laughs> so good. You were there when it started. <laughs> <laughs> he told him everything. Uh, listen, yeah. Drop the Dead guys. Donkey, <laughs> The Reawakening, uh, is on oh. tour now until the 22nd of June. Thanks, guys. Thank you so, so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.